One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, tea time. Any time is tea time. Anyway, it's tea time. And we are on 81 South. That's right, we're on 81. Not in Virginia yet, in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. Turn with us today, please, to Mark chapter 11, verse 23 through 25. Mark chapter 11, verse 23 through 25. Speak to the mountain. That's what we're going to talk about today is how to speak to the mountain. And what happens when you do? Here we go. I've got it in yellow in my Bible. I don't know who Mark put that X there. That wasn't me. But anyway, it could have been one of my children and many moons ago. Uh, right here. So, Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Okay. Guess what? First, we must have faith in God. And not for the moment, but we need to continually have faith in God. Let's look at the road. For assuredly I say to you, whoever, that means me, say who, I am whoever, okay, we are whoever, says to this mountain, not to that mountain, but to this mountain, this mountain that is in front of me, this mountain, this mountain that is in my life, okay, whatever that mountain, you know, the Bible talks many times about metaphors. Now, I do believe that you can actually move a mountain. If you believe in your heart that you can and I don't think that God's gonna put that faith in your heart because I don't so much or it's gonna be I believe that mountains don't necessarily need to be moved but the metaphor here is something that's really big in our life that does need to be moved then we can get the faith in our hearts to move it but you can have faith in your heart all you want, but if you don't speak to the mountain, okay? Whoever says to the mountain, doesn't say whoever prays and asks God to move the mountain. No, 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 no. Don't say, you can say, Lord, please get this, this cancer out of my life. Please get this diabetes out of my child. Lord, please get this debt out of my life. No, we speak to the debt. Debt? I command you in the name of Jesus, go from my household in Jesus' name. Lack, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Get out of my life. Get out of my checkbook. Get out of my bank account. Checkbook. And go in the name of Jesus. Toothache, I speak to you in Jesus' name. Go from me right now. Get out of my mouth. Infection, get out of my mouth in Jesus' name. Cancer, go from my friend. Get out of her body in Jesus' name. I bind you. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. You will not. You cannot come back in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That by your power and your grace, these things are done. Now, it's always good to thank God for the power and for the grace. Because the power and the grace comes from Him. And the authority comes from Him. But God gives us, as believers, and as His creation even. Because some people... You know, it says, many shall come in that day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I lay hands on the sick in your name? Didn't I speak with tongues in your name? You say, depart from me because I never knew you. So hey, even, I didn't know you. unfortunately, you can actually use the name of Jesus and have faith in it and not truly know Jesus. Now, I'm not saying that you don't know he's God, you don't know he's Savior, but I'm talking about having that intimacy 
because you spend time with God, because you listen to God, because you obey God, and you obey His Word, not just in casting out devils, not just in speaking to mountains, not just in healing the sick, but you obey Him in every area of your life, in loving people, in caring for people, and having compassion for people. And then God's voice commanding you to do and not to do. I think I sort of got off the subject here, but, but not really. But let's keep on. Right here. It says, Whoever says to the mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart doesn't say doesn't doubt in his mind but doubt in his heart in his spirit in his person in his inner man but believes that those things he says we don't have to believe what somebody else says it's not about that it's about what we say believes that what he says will be done he will have whatever he says now how do we get to believe what we say will be done well first of all do we do the things that we say we will do? Do we keep our word? When we say we're going to be there at 12 o'clock, are we there at 12 o'clock? When we say we're going to go and go do something with our child, do we show up? Are we there? And I understand that there are things that get in the way, and we, and we do we do our best with God's, even with even our best with God's help, which is better than our best, to be men and women of our word. Because God is a God of His Word. And He expects us to be men and women of our Word as well. That's why He says, you know, don't take inner vows. Because, don't say I'll never do something. Because that can block things happening in our life. Because we have said it. And if we believe and have any faith in that when we said it, that can be a blockage. It can keep things from happening. Or it can also cause things from happening. So we can say this can be a good thing. We can get a good mountain out of our life by what we say. Or we can even cast something good out of our life. We can cast something bad, the bad mountain, that's what I meant to say. Or we can even cast, a, unfortunately, a good thing out of our life. So we have to be careful what we say. And we have to be more so careful what we believe in our heart. But if we don't doubt in our heart and we speak to the mountain, then we shall have whatever we say. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, okay, no, that's not speaking to a mountain, but that's asking God for something. Whatever things you ask when you pray, when you talk to God, when you commune with God, commune with His Spirit, His Holy Spirit, commune with the Father and the Son, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them, you will have them. And there's another verse that says, you know, with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Because when you believe that God has already given you something, then you go ahead and thank Him for it. I know that there are some children that are very blessed to have parents who when they say they're going to buy them a dress, they say, yes, honey, I will buy you that dress for prom. Then they just get so excited and they thank their mother, they thank their father. Because they know that their parents just told them they're going to do something and they're going to do it. And that's the way we need to be as individuals. And that's the way we need to be with God. We need to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Father, that I believe that I receive. I receive the money I need to pay my rent, to pay my mortgage. I believe that I receive healing in my body. Because we can ask God for that. Now, we could command sickness and disease to go from us. That's the, if that's the mountain in our life or in the lives of our loved ones, our family, and even our friends. And we, we can thank God for healing. Okay? We can thank God for His healing touch. And for His power and for His grace. And for His provision. But let's not forget a very important verse. Sometimes people quote those, verse, those top verses right there. But they don't go on to the next one. And right here it has it divided. I don't like that because I believe they truly, truly go together. Because Jesus says, and. Okay, and means it's, a, it's including. Okay, it's coming, bringing the two verses together. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, okay, if you have bitterness, if you have resentment, if you have anger, if you have hate, forgive him. 
forgive that person. Forgive yourself if you were that person. That your Father in Heaven may also give you, forgive you, excuse me, your trespasses. And we have to forgive others. We have to forgive others. Anything that we have against them. Okay, anything that they've done to even say against us. We have to forgive the offense. Because the bait of Satan is offense. And we don't want to let Satan in our life. We don't want to let unbelief in our life. Sometimes I think it's hard to believe that God wants us to have anything because we know that we're in unforgiveness. So God is really telling you, you know, let go of the thing. Forgive the person that's hurt you. Forgive the person that's offended you. Forgive the person you have something against. And that your Father in Heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. And that's good because when we know that when we have taken a step to forgive those that have trespassed us against us and we know that we have God's forgiveness and then we can have the faith to receive what we have said and what we have asked for but if you do not forgive neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses okay that's a scary thought because if we're not forgiven then it cuts off the relationship with God then we're not able to have faith to believe for things, even for, to for, believe for our own salvation, because God says, you know, if you don't forgive others, I won't forgive you, and you'll be thrown into the lake of fire with gnashing teeth. So we really, really, really have to understand that God did not save us so that we can go out and judge others and have an offense against them. God saved us so that we can be a light and show His forgiveness and His grace and His mercy. To, and his justice to others. And justice is not judgment. Justice is treating people fairly. God bless y'all. Going down the road here at 81. Now let's transfer over here to Stuart. Stuart, Stuart has some input here. Stuart, you got any input for tea time? No, not right now. Not right now? All right, can you sing for us, Stuart? Sing for us, Stuart. No, I'm not gonna sing anything. No more? No more songs? Okay, I guess I've said enough. Y'all have a great afternoon. God bless you, and we'll see you in Virginia. Bye now.